compromise by doing what is right. I'm going to put this on to the end. Even if that means that you will suffer. Even if that is not to your greatest advantage. Even if it means you will not get that raise or that promotion at work. Because you could fudge your numbers in your department and you could look better in your boss's eyes. Don't do it. A prideful person does it. And that's what happened to Paul. If you look back in chapter 21, he, you see he goes through it. He says, but for the Gentiles who believe we sent a letter. And then he says, Paul took the men the next day and he purified himself along with them. And he went to the temple and giving notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled. And, offering a, um, and the offering presented for each one of them. And it says in verse 27, now this is where I'm getting this. When the seven days were almost completed, in other words, they're almost ready to make the offerings and go into the temple. Seeing him in the temple, oh, excuse me, when the, offering, when the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, meaning Greek Jews, Hellenistic Jews, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him. In other words, Paul did not get to finish his week of purification. And that's by the plan of God. Now, people who believe that Paul was in sin, they said, well, God can only allow sin for so long and then God's going to take him out of that. No, I, I see Paul did what he did even if it meant his problems wouldn't go away. See, if you are a Christian this morning, you do what is right and you don't compromise even if it means your problems and your difficulties and your situation doesn't get solved. You do what is right and you can sleep at night. Amen. If you don't do what is right, if you fudge things at time, if you don't do what is right, then who's to say that things are going to turn out better for you in the long run anyway? We trust in the sovereign hand of God. We trust in God to deal with the future. If you think you control the future, go ahead, try. I can't control the future. I've tried. It doesn't work too well. And so this morning... Paul, in these two sections of this chapter, is not compromising. I, was, I, had, I had it all planned out what I was going to say. God is a compromiser. God is sinning. I mean, God is sinning. God can't sin. Uh, God is not a compromiser. Uh, Paul is compromising. I had it all planned out, but no, I do not think that the author, Luke, meant to put it here in that light. I think he didn't compromise because, number one, he accommodated, and number two, he did what was right. And what I want to do is I want to show you in the life of David two ways, two examples of how this takes place in someone's life that David sometimes compromised. Did David sin? You all know the story of Bathsheba. Of course he sinned. He compromised his convictions. He didn't do what is right. And he didn't accommodate weaker, his weakness. Now, he was the weaker brother in that situation. He didn't accommodate his weakness. In other words, that would mean that he shouldn't be looking where he shouldn't be looking. But look with me in 1 Samuel chapter 27. I want to read Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 27. To give us two, just two examples here. Okay, 1 Samuel. Second Samuel, First Samuel. Okay, it's on page four hundred three. No, I don't know what it is on your Bible, but four hundred three. David said in verse one. I want to tell you, David had a wrong belief. He said in his heart, "Now I shall perish one day by the hand of Saul." That was wrong. David knew that. David had been revealed that he would be king, and he said, "There is nothing better for me." that I should escape to the land of the Philippines. So what happened in David's life is that when he thought something incorrectly, he thought that he could accommodate, or basically he wasn't accommodating, he was compromising by going over to the land of the Philistines. 
And it says, So David arose and went over, and he and 600 men who were with him, to Achish, the son of uh, Maok, the king of Gath. And David lived with Achish at Gath, and his, he and his men, and every man with, with his household, and David with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel, and Abigail of Carmel, and uh, Nabal's widow. And when it was said, it was told Saul that David had fled to Gath, he no longer sought him. In other words, he thought that he could do something wrong and get out of trouble. And guess what? For a period of time, he did. Let me tell you, you can do something wrong and get out of trouble for a period of time, but not forever. You may think that you have outwitted God by doing something and compromising your belief, but David compromised his belief here and did what was wrong. But you know what happened later on? If you look at verse 20, look at chapter 29, and we can go on and on about, about what happened in the meantime, but David now is in a precarious situation because he is sent out to do raids, and he comes back and he kills everybody in his raids. And verse 29 says, Now the Philistines gathered all their forces at, at uh, Aphek, and the Israelites were camped by the springs. So now they're going, to begin, they're going to battle against Israel, and David is in a situation that he is supposed to be king, is going to destroy Israel. And so he's in a situation, and it says, As the lords of the Philistines were passing by hundreds and by thousands, and David and his men were passing by on the... On, on in the rear of Achish, the commanders of the Philistines said, What are these Hebrews doing here? And Achish said to the commanders of the Philistines, Is this not David the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, who has been with uh, who has been with me now for days and years, and since he is and since he has deserted to me, uh, me, to me, I have found no fault in him. But the commanders of the Philistines were angry with him, and the commanders of the Philistines said to him, Send him back, that he may return to the place to which you assigned him. In other words, he was spared from going into battle against his own countrymen. See, David thought he could elude Saul, but guess what? Every decision you make, if you make a wrong decision, it will come back in your life. It will. If you look back a few chapters earlier, we find another issue with David. David now is in the wilderness of Paran in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 25. And it says in verse 2, and there was a man in Moran whose business was in Carmel. The man was very rich and he had 300 sheep, 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats and he was uh, shearing the sheep in Carmel. And now the name of the man was Nabal and, the, and his wife Abigail. And if you remember, Abigail became David's wife uh, later on because Nabal is going to die in this story. But basically what happens in this story, he's shearing his sheep. David goes, asks him, hey, we've, we've taken care of your sheep, shepherds and your sheep. Can you give us something? And he says, no way, no how. David gets upset. David wants to kill him, but his wife comes in, intercedes for him and stops David from sinning and violating his conviction that vengeance is from God. If you look all the way down in verse 29, or verse, uh, let's see, verse, um, let's start at verse 30 of 1 Samuel 25, and it says that when the Lord has and when the Lord has done to my Lord according to all the good that has spoken concerning you and has appointed you prince over Israel. This is Abigail saying this. And my Lord shall have no cause of grief or pangs of conscience for having shed blood without cause. For my Lord is taking vengeance himself. And when the Lord has dealt with my Lord, meaning David, then remember your servants. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you uh, this day to me. Blessed be your discretion. Blessed be you, who have kept me this day from blood guilt and from avenging myself with my own hand. Here David did not compromise. He eventually did what was right. That's what was all going on here. In Acts chapter 21, 17 through 36, Paul was in a difficult situation. You know, and it's easy to be a, 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 a Sunday quarterback and look at Paul and say, Hey, Paul, you got it wrong. You're doing things wrong. But Paul did not compromise the gospel. He did not compromise his convictions. He accommodated where he could accommodate. That's what we do. We accommodate each other, don't we? I mean, there's always going to be something about every individual that you're not going to like. Right? There's always something that's going to bug you. But do you accommodate? 
And if you're not going to compromise, do you just have settled in your heart to do what is right? Regardless of the situation...